Hi everyone, my name is Lena and welcome to my garden, or more like my patio today. I'm a gardener from Zone 8B in the Pacific Northwest of Washington State. Today is March 8th of 2023 and this is also my first video of the year, so thanks for joining me today. I would like to share my experience of growing these beautiful evergreen shrubs called camellias with you. I have been uh, growing them in these containers for about three years now and this is their fourth uh, blooming season. They have been performing quite well for me and I'm so happy. Um, if you're wondering how I planted them when I first got them a couple years ago, uh, like what size are my containers, what soil I used, and um, things that I added to my soil, and maybe how much and how frequent I water and fertilize them, etc, etc. I've already done a video on that, so I'm going to include the link to that video in the description below. Today we're going to focus on a few topics, uh, things like pros and cons of growing camellias in containers. Um, if you were thinking of buying camellias for the first time and you're unsure of whether or not you want to plant them in containers or put them in the ground, um, you might find this video useful. I will also be talking about the types of containers that I have them in. I have them in two types, plastic and wooden, and uh, to me, plastic containers are a winner uh, for several reasons. So I'll be talking about that as well today, and uh, towards the end of the video, I would like to share with you what I do to protect my camellias from the harsh weather conditions that winter can sometimes bring. So those are going to be the things that I will talk about. Um, before I jump right into those topics, I would like to introduce my five camellias that I have around me here on my patio to you first. Um, let's start with, I'm gonna go by um, their bloom time. Okay, so uh, the first one to bloom for me out of all my five is this little one right here. And she's in the front, so I'm gonna lower the camera a little bit so you can see better. Um, this is Camellia Sasanqua, and it's also the only Camellia Sasanqua that I have. The rest are all Camellia Japonica. This is a variety called Shishigashira. Shishigashira, like most Camellia Sasanquas, they bloom pretty early in the season. So this one starts blooming for me, I think, late November, maybe early December. It goes on for about two and a half months. Right now, it is March, first week of March, and it's pretty much done with all the flowering. Um, you can see like, you know, some of the flowers are starting to brown and fall off. Um, so this is the first one to bloom. And then the second one is this one right here, right behind it. Uh, this is Camellia Japonica and this is a variety called Debutante. And Debutante has the most delicate soft pink flowers that are super romantic and just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so uh, this camellia starts blooming right after, or actually kind of like in the middle of uh, my Shishikashira blooming. So uh, usually right around January, February, uh, goes on until March. Her uh, her bloom cycle this year got um, kind of delayed in the middle because we were hit with a pretty bad snowstorm and I lost a couple of buds and a couple of flowers. Um, and that's inevitable because sometimes you have to kind of, you know, go along with whatever mother nature gives you. Um, but this is debutante. Now, once debutante is getting ready to be done, I am blessed with this one here. This to my left is also Camellia Japonica. It's a variety called Mrs. Tingley. And Mrs. Tingley has such beautiful uh, true pink or mid pink uh, blooms. Um, and she gets, like right now, as you can see, she's full of buds, full of swollen buds uh, that are getting ready to bloom their hearts out here soon. Um, in terms of the number of blooms, this one is an absolute winner. Um, this one might have like really beautiful, delicate flowers, but um, every year so far, it has had uh, less uh, number of buds compared to Mrs. Tingley. So this one is a very prolific bloomer. Um, and then once Mrs. Tingley is getting ready to be done, I get to enjoy these two right here. And they're in the back, so I'm going to move the camera a little closer so you can get a better look. Um, 
This one is a red variety. It's called Tom Knutsen. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I hope that, you know, the K is not silence in this in this case. Tom Knutsen is a red uh, camellia that is the latest or the last one to bloom for me. Um, and as you can see, uh, the buds are kind of still tiny. Uh, it's got some time to go uh, before it starts blooming. Uh, usually blooms uh, around like early spring it goes on sometimes until may so you know if you choose the right varieties you can have camellias blooming for you from like november all the way to may isn't that amazing um my last one uh is going to be this one this is camellia tricolor and in terms of health uh, you can probably tell it's not doing its best right now and that's because two winters ago it suffered from a really bad cold damage I didn't do a good job of protecting it um, from the harsh conditions and I almost lost it but I didn't and it's still clinging on to its dear life um, it's put out one, two, three, four, I'm counting like four buds um, on the branches but you also see a lot of like dead branches and dead leaves so with this one um, I blame myself for what happened but I'm going to continue to uh, tend to it and care for it and see if I can uh, nurse it back to life alrighty so those are my five camellias guys that I have um, let's jump right into our topics today The first thing I want to talk about the pros and cons of growing camellias in containers. Um, my number one pro for me is the fact that um, I'm able to move them around easily. So mobility is number one. Um, with these containers, I put the, what are those things called now with wheels, uh, scrambling for words here, uh, oh, caddy. I put the little caddy um, underneath the container, uh, so when I want to move it, I just grab the bottom and I drag it along which makes you know it really really easy for me to do by myself and the reason why it's important for me is because I, I do move my camellias around quite a bit um, depending on what time they bloom so for example this is the setting that I have uh, for the purpose of this video alone but normally I would have some furniture out here and I would have a camellia my all my camellias kind of like lining up uh, like this way so for example Shishi Kashiro was blooming like really beautifully two months ago I would put her in the front so she could get center stage and I could just look out from my living room area uh, through this window and I would see her right away so that's uh, mobility is uh, very important for me so that's the number one pro um, the second pro is the size and also space so size and space um, with uh, container camellias you can control their sizes quite easily you can prune uh, the branches I mean you can prune the branches as well uh, if you grow them in the ground but with the container you have the ability to take them out of the containers and uh, do some root pruning um, to kind of keep them relatively small so let me uh, show you my tallest camellia which is going to be this one uh, camellia debutante uh, she is right now standing at uh, my height and I'm 5'5 five five, so I would say like you know five and a half feet tall including the container right so uh, this is a really good height for me to have her here um, on my patio. I would probably let it grow to maybe like six feet and that's about it. And I will start like pruning and you know shaping it. So it's really easy for me to do with uh, the container camellias. And it also uh, will benefit you if you are limited with space. Um, right here, as you can probably tell, I'm sitting on my patio, uh, the part that is roofed, and it's quite narrow, and I'm able to have five camellias, so that's, that's quite a lot for this little space that I have. Um, so number two pro, uh, space and size. Number three is control. You are able to control everything. You're like, you're kind of like playing the role of mother nature in this case. So for example, um, 
when I planted them, I was able to just put them in a you know nutrient-rich soil right away. Uh, whereas if I were to grow them in the ground, I would have to test my soil, do a lot of amending, and you know things like that. So um, the 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 level of control that I have with the uh, containers is really. Um, quite beneficial to you know like their health um, so yeah you can control the uh, the amount of water they get um, the type of soil they get the uh, the acid level in the soil these guys like a little bit of acidic soil so you can even control that um, you literally control everything so that's uh, control number three number four these containers uh, they can also act as uh, decoration for your patio or whatever space that you put them if you choose you know like beautiful containers they can actually be a decorative item so that's uh, the fourth one and the last one I'm going to say that and this one is debatable I'm I'm sure it's uh, it's good for your back um, you don't have to you know bend down like you know, you know get on your knees to kind of garden uh, with this type of gardening so it's actually really good for your back um, for in my case I don't know about <laughs> everybody else but in my case like the soil around me that I have in my garden is so hard to dig it's full of rocks um, for me to be able to dig like like three feet uh, deep it would take me a good half hour and uh, you know lots and lots of bending and back work and uh, it's, it's it's painful you know to dig but this is like you know you don't need to do that so that's a uh, five pros uh, of growing camellias in containers for me now let's talk about cons with all these benefits there are some drawbacks um, number one it's more expensive uh, more expensive in the long run because you're constantly um, you know using water and you have to water these guys at least once a week um, make sure you know like the the soil is kept consistently moist all the time for them to thrive so you know you're you're using more water um, compared to as as if you were to grow them in the ground you also use more uh, soil because you do have to change out the soil every couple of years in my case I change out their soil every other season um, if you don't do that it will be depleted of nutrients and they won't do as well so it's a little bit more expensive and sometimes these containers they are they are not cheap I think I paid like almost $50 for uh, this plastic container and that's already the cheapest if you are going with like a wood a wooden container like these guys I think I paid even more um, for these so they're they're not they're not cheap so that's the number one con for me um, the second one is the um, the level of care with containers you put in so much time it's quite time consuming and, and you do have to give them a little bit more protection um, compared to you know the in-ground uh, version of these uh, gardening um, for summer and winter I really do have to come out here and I have to offer them protection and it takes more time for me to you know like constantly like come out here to water and things like that so those those are the two cons um, and I can only think of two cons there might be more uh, just can't think of them right now but if you are watching and if you have experience growing camellias in containers before and you want to add some things you know to my list I would be so happy to hear from you all right now I'd like to talk about the two types of containers that I have so I have um, this one um, which is wood and then this one, which is plastic. And in the beginning of the video, I said that plastic containers are a winner in my books because, you know, I think plastic is really durable and it's sturdy um, and strong, uh, but it's light enough for me to lift and move around like quite easily. So I really like that about plastic containers. Also, when it comes to holding uh, moisture, uh, plastic also does a better job compared to wood. Um, when I water, I feel like the, you know the water doesn't drain out as quickly, and it uh, it holds the moisture like a lot longer compared to wood. Um, with wood, if you don't treat the wood, um, it has potential to look like kind of raggedy as time goes by, kind of like how mine is looking right now. And also, if you have like cracks and things in between the 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 wood, um, you will lose uh, water and moisture faster that way also. And um, when it comes to protection, uh, wood kind of 
doesn't really give enough or like you know uh, as 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 good protection as plastic plastic um, when it's cold or hot you know outside it does it offers more protection to the roots so I really like that about plastic it's also cheaper uh, like I said I think I paid about $50 for this container and I paid about 20 to 30 dollars more uh, when it's wood but you know wood has its aesthetics right it looks really nice it's natural material it uh, it, it goes like better it looks more natural so that's a good thing with wood um what else well i've had also like other materials like terracotta or ceramic uh, and even then um, i still prefer plastic because plastic doesn't crack um i guess one of the downfall or one of the uh drawback of having plastic containers is that it's probably not um, as environmental friendly um, so if you were to buy plastic containers just make sure you buy the ones that you really like and you you know use them for a long time in my case I'm probably gonna keep these plastic containers for as long as I garden um, what else yeah I think that's it that's my two cents on the two uh, types of containers that I've got um, now let me show you what I've done um, to protect my camellias from the harsh winter so far So one of the first things and the easiest things that you could do for your camellia is to make sure that you water the containers really well before uh, freezing temperatures hit. So what I do is I keep track of the weather and when I find out that oh it's gonna be like freezing temperatures tomorrow, I come out here and I make sure I soak all of my containers because you don't want them to dry freeze especially in the roots. That's really bad for the plant and that's relatively easy for you to do. Um, the second thing that I have done and I only started doing that this year is I hung up a piece of like really large uh, clear tarp all around my patio and that could be one of the reasons why I kind of sound like I'm speaking to you from a well is because you know like my voice doesn't have anywhere to go and it, it bounces back uh, so I apologize but um, this type of protection that I've done for my uh, camellias it really uh, works wonders for me because I don't I barely lost any buds or flowers this year to the due to uh, you know the weather and we've had a couple of snowstorms that came through um, I did lose some however um, because we had a really particularly bad one um, like about a month ago and um, some of my uh, th and that was when debutante was like in full bloom so I lost some buds and I lost uh, a couple of flowers that were already opening so they started turning brown and you know falling off and that's you know that's inevitable you kind of have to go with whatever mother nature throws at you but you know it general in general like for the most part it offers like really really good protection um, if you um, don't want to, you know, kind of wrap up your patio or if you're in a different situation, you also have the option to come out here and individually wrap your camellia. So you can like, you know, stake around the plant and wrap it with burlap or paper. Um, if you decide to do that, that's totally fine. But I would recommend, you know, like you don't leave it uh wrapped for too long because you want you know like you want to allow air circulation uh, to prevent like mold and mildew so it's kind of like you have to wrap and unwrap wrap and unwrap uh, depending on the weather if you are tempted to bring your camellias inside you totally can but not for too long camellias are not meant to be house plants they are uh you know meant to be garden plants they will not thrive um indoors I, I don't know, I, I don't want to say this for sure, but I have not met or heard of anyone successfully growing camellias as houseplant. If you have, drop me a line, I would love to hear from you. Alrighty, I think that wraps up my video today. This is all the information that I have on growing camellias in containers and my experience with it so far. And, you know, random topics here and there. I hope you find this video helpful. If you are setting out on getting your first camellia, don't hesitate, don't wait, you're gonna love it. Uh, I hope your winter is going by quickly and soon it'll be growing season again where we can all come out here and enjoy the sun and growing beautiful things. For me, I'm gonna go back inside and I'm gonna finish my packing. I am off to Thailand in two days. I am so excited. I haven't been back to visit my friends and family for three years now, I think, since the pandemic. So it's been a long time. And this time I have plans to go to different garden centers in Thailand and different beautiful parks. So maybe I'll share that experience with you too, um, depending on how much time I have, I guess. Um, but thank you for watching and uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you when I get back. Happy gardening, bye.